Ladies and gentlemen, this is the day when legend has it that St. Patrick was granted three wishes by an angel of the Lord in order to bring happiness and hope to the Irish. His first wish, that on this day the weather should always be fair and allow the faithful to attend Mass. Second, that on every Thursday and Saturday, twelve Irish souls should be freed from the pains of hell. And third, that no outlander should ever rule over Ireland. I'm confident today that no rain has fallen on the Emerald Isle, and there's good reason to believe that the 12 Irishmen have been regularly released from the nether regions as promised. Judge Nealon just told me he thinks many of them are here today. And in Ireland, they are celebrating this day in freedom and liberty. But you and I know that life was not always this good for the Irish, either back in the old country or here in, in America. In the, in the Ireland of 1691, no Irish Catholic could vote, enter a university, or marry a Protestant. In February of 1847, at the height of the Great Potato Famine, it was announced in the House of Commons that 15,000 people a day were dying of starvation in Ireland. As you may recall, Queen Victoria was so moved by this pitiful news that she contributed five pounds to the Society for Irish Relief. So the Irish left Ireland and many of them came here to the United States. They left behind them hearts and fields and a nation yearning to be free. As the first of the racial minorities, our forefathers were subject to every discrimination found wherever discrimination is known. But the Irish have survived persecution in their own land and discrimination in ours because many of the Irish were gifted with a boundless confidence that served them so well. Let us recall for a moment the rich heritage of the Irish. It's important to note, I think, that the wealth of our legacy stems from a, a small island in the far Atlantic with a population one quarter the size of the state of, Pop of Pennsylvania. Let's recall the history of other years. The Irish going into battle with the Union Army, a green sprig in their hats. 1,200 Irish soldiers of the Irish Brigade went into battle on a bitterly cold day in December 1862. Only 280 survived. General Robert E. Lee said of the Irish Brigade, never were men so brave. President Kennedy, in touring Ireland, used to ask the crowds that he talked with how many had cousins in America. The usual response was for nearly every hand in the crowd to be raised. And it was with great delight that he was able to reply, I've seen them all and they are doing well. I like to think, as President Kennedy did, that the emerald thread runs into the cloth you weave today, that these policies, in which he believes so strongly, are the current flowerings of the Irish tradition, directed toward freedom for all Americans here and for all peoples throughout the world. I also like to think that these policies will survive and continue as the cause of Irish freedom survived the death of the liberator Owen Rowe O'Neill. As you will recall, O'Neill was one of the great figures of Irish history. It was of the period after his death when the entire Irish nation was overwhelmed with grief that the following words were written. Sagest in the council was he, kindest in the hall, sure, we never won a battle. Twas Owen won them all. Soft as a woman's was your voice, O'Neill. Bright was your eye. Oh, why did you leave us, Owen? Why did you die? Your troubles are all over. You're at rest with God on high. But we're slaves and we're orphans, Owen. Why did you die? We're sheep without a shepherd. When the snow shuts out the sky, Oh, why did you leave us, Owen? Why did you die? And so, on this St. Patrick's evening, let me urge you one final time to recall the heritage of the Irish.
Let us hold our hands to those who struggle for freedom today, here, at home, and throughout the world. Let us hold our hands to them as for those who struggle here at home and abroad as Ireland struggled for a thousand years. Let us not leave them to be sheep without a shepherd when the snow shuts out the sky. Let us show them that we have not forgotten the constancy and the faith and the hope of the Irish. And so in God's mercy, a happy St. Patrick's Day to you all.